Ghana boy becomes the first African to sell out the 80,000 capacity London Stadium. Oh, oh my god, this news clogged my whole timeline, you can imagine. Delay? <laughs> it's not denial, guys. <laughs> can I get on here, man? From the stands? Wow, that, that's a beautiful sight. Now the question is, how did he do it? Because we are all forgetting how he actually did it. So I'm just here today to throw some light on it. <coughs> Benna Boy had plans this year. A, a lot of plans. To, to spread love with his Love Damini album. And that's how the Love Damini tour began. The tour kicked off with one country that has been very instrumental to his life. You know what I mean? UK, he has had a lot of stories there. You know that sound, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, those are rumors. Just, just rumors, please. I beg you. But there was one particular stadium he was told to stop dreaming about. Uh, okay, I'm just making things up at this point. <laughs> the London Stadium, which was formerly called the Olympic Stadium, where the big matches were held. Big. A British stadium, wow. But will now go down in history to being taken over by Africans. <laughs> Talk about an honor reverse card. <laughs> Table 10, guys. We got them doing our bidding. I mean, it's only right to honor our forefathers, eh? Right, right. <laughs> uh... So now here's the thing a lot of artists have had this dream. Some would never achieve it, <laughs> and some would. So this is to every upcoming artist. How did he do all this? How was he able to sell out an 80,000 capacity stadium and sell out in almost every venue? One word. Trust. Teams, resource, unity, systems, technology. Okay, I just made that up. <laughs> but no, 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 it's in line with what I'm about to talk about. But guys, this is the goal. Now, let me tell you how to build that goal. Show you what is actually behind the scenes. And who knows? He probably might do more than what he did. Probably. Might. <laughs> I mean, guys, rules are meant to be broken some rules or death this is a very simple understandable concept but uh, it might be a little more complex first of all what is a brand a brand is not what you see no a brand is how you make people feel when they associate themselves with you when they mention your name, what feeling do I get? What, how? You have the song, you have the story, you can stare the ship in any way and form. It just takes practice. Some people have the energy but don't have the voice. Well, guys, you are in luck. In those times, you have to be talented to even blow up, man. And you know what they say, energy is contagious. In my experience as playing a band, there's one thing that has proven to work. Three words. Engage the audience. Make them feel like they are in control, but you actually are. Well, that, that's skill. Ask them questions, bring them on stage, engage them. Well, not that kind of engagement. <laughs> I, I said, I don't do that. Ah, this guy is going to get the lawsuit of his life 20 years later. But remember what the brand is. Benna Boy doesn't compromise on that. The question you should ask yourself is, how would you make your audience feel? I can't stress this enough. Sound. See the way the lineries are located at each section of the stadium. And this is how the lineries looks like, guys. I always say you can have a bad video quality. But you can never have a bad that is worse. You didn't hear what I said, but you could guess what I meant. You see? But I should get frustrating, trust me. The banner boy behind the scenes pays very, very close attention to his sound. Check two, 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 two. See, see the equipment he has. See, like see. Hey, right. 
See, you know how much these things cost? Baby, my baby. See that digital mixer? Oh my god, that thing can buy a car. A car. Come on, see the sound is coming in. Why won't you pay him well? As an instrumentalist myself, the sound we get actually influences greatly how we play. That's why there are monitors for us to hear ourselves, in ear monitors for us to hear ourselves while like everything, like attention to sound. Because if the sound is bad, it demoralizes us and now we can't play for you to enjoy. And now you start complaining that, oh my god, this guy's performance is not good. No. Other stuff play a factor. Good sound gives you confidence. Also, this problem, mixing engineers. Hmm, guys. Can you hear me? Guys, the mixing engineer is just the engineer behind the mixer. And then this is what the mixer looks like. You see, the problem I have with Africans is that the mixers, when they finish mixing their sound, they just go and sit down somewhere. It's like they are done with their job. No, a mixing engineer is also like an instrumentalist. You are not done until the job is done. Each and every song has its different feel. You get me? You have to work around the clock. Some of them you have to increase the voice, reduce the voice, increase the backing vocalist. So you see them like this. They are all like this. They're like no rest until the show is done. Sometimes Benna Boy wants a cappella. Okay, increase his voice, reduce the instruments, bring the beat. He wants guitar, bring the in, 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 reverb. Like this. all that. Like, but I've seen that shit with my own eyes. The first time I saw like a foreign engineer doing that, I was like, ah. So this is what they are supposed to do, and they do that, and they went. Uh -uh. AC, no hits to the engineers and the mixers there, you know, I, I love you guys, so I'm just saying some Bro, see, a lot of things are happening in the background that we don't see One thing I thought the upcoming, invest in your sound, don't compromise You see this matter here, this thing, it goes beyond just your song You see that guy here and now that we have with music, we have somebody in charge of song selection But song selection is very, very important in live performances, very On a live stage, we call something rhythm or flow state Or you could simply say Energy. When you're selecting your songs on a live performance or a live stage, you go according to it. Most of the time, it's personal preference, of course. But one of the most common practices is the build up. You start slow and you end hot. And just like sex, you don't just enter the room and undress and start banging. Maybe, maybe. You build the rhythm, the foreplay, then you ride. And once you get the energy, you maintain that energy. <laughs> yeah. You try as much as possible to maintain it. But always remember this. Human beings remember the first thing and the last thing that you always do. How I begin this video and how I end this video is how you guys are going to remember me. Sometimes. Well, the middle, mm, not so much. So now here's what I mean by song selection. Think like a DJ. When you get people vibing to a song, you select songs in that certain rhythm or family in order to maintain the energy. Well, take Benna Boy, for example. See my baby, my baby, you. You know, Sunday, you win the you. Get me like a winter, you win. Put it to the run, the room, the room. I don't care for energy. Yeah. You see that hey, that's the excitement you get from knowing that they moved to another song by maintaining the same energy, maintaining the same energy. At that point that the crowd shouts is because they realize that there's something different. But that shout is an energy that's contagious and to affect the whole crowd. You get what I mean? You're maintaining the energy or the rhythm for as long as possible because if you stop, the energy drops. But sometimes you can fluctuate through the energy. That's what we call the dynamics. You see, bro, a lot of things go into this music thing, man. The musician in me will never make me enjoy a performance, man. I'm always analyzing. So create an energy and maintain it. Start big and bigger. See, honestly, I can't stress this one to me now. The same Bernard boy went to a homeland and people complain. They complain about the show a lot, calling him disrespectful and all that. It's okay, she by himself. I forgot the glass. Ben Abo also complain about the whole organization of the show. There's a saying we have in live band performances. Fight after. You can see the band playing and everything looks fine, but deep down there are some two people who want to beat themselves after the performance. The rule is don't kill the energy before you start the show. That's the most important thing. Just like personally, I don't read the comments before I shoot a video. The last time I did that, who? <laughs> Logistics and organization. So obviously, if Benna Boy also gets frustrated before a performance, he will put that energy on you guys. And if the organization is bad, you are going to be performing to a frustrated audience. That's more difficult than convincing Ronaldo fans that Messi is better. Someone builds a hotel with all that money and everything, but he forgets one thing. <laughs> Who is going to sleep in it? You could have said all that and done that, but if you don't promote it, your family members are the ones that are going to your performance. <laughs> now the question is how? One way, partnership. For example, with big brands like Coke. Coca-Cola.
Yep, so guys, these are kind of the things that build trust in you as an artist and you also as a brand. Once trust is built, <laughs> you don't have to stress trust. People go to the ends of the earth just to be at your show because of how you made them feel. But your music first of all has to be good. Please, I beg you. So congrats to Benna Boy again for making Africa proud. And about you, maybe you can sell out an 80,000 capacity stadium. Maybe. One thing is assured, uh, this record might be around for a while. Or oh, maybe not. The journey will not be easy, man. Selling out an 80,000 capacity stadium isn't easy. Or you could just sell Coke. Coca-Cola. Georgia, by the way you're looking for so African. With that body making me feel nauseous. I'ma be cautious, I don't wanna get emotional. And the last thing I will ever do.